You are not the first assassin sent to kill me. And you will not be the last. You are bold to come to Shimara Castle, the den of your enemies. This was once my home. Did your masters not tell you who I was? Chills. Absolute chills. Pretty reasonable response that gamers both in and out of the Overwatch sphere can relate to when they saw that Dragon Cinematic showcased a week ahead of Overwatch's initial launch in May of 2016. I remember not even remotely caring about Overwatch as a franchise back then, but still being hooked onto the flavor of the month games, yearly releases like FIFA and the upcoming Call of Duty, and who can forget League of Legends. Yet, my first taste for the product and the emotions that cinematic conveyed led me, alongside many others, to be looking at Overwatch from the sidelines with high interest, excited to see what the mark on the gaming landscape the game clearly had potential to create. And although I didn't get the chance to experience it in what many consider the golden age of Overwatch, between launch until the ushering in of the GOATS meta in Season 2, a Nanoblade without counters and a Genji going crazy in the backline used to be a common sight as it was Hanzo's inevitably reworked and broken scatter arrow shenanigans. It was odd, and it was a little broken, but it was fun, and it gave the Shimada brothers a sense of power that aligned with the two heroes' identity from the cinematic to the promotional material and so on. But these days, I'm not entirely sure that that identity is really captured in either of them anymore. Relegated to niche hero status, coupled with being universally agreed upon to be meh heroes at worst, and decent fringe A-tier picks at best within the competitive community's metagame, the Shimada brothers are not only a shadow of their former selves in terms of strength, but also gameplay health and even hero fantasy. So how did these two get to this point, and what have the devs, and to a smaller extent us as the community, done to combat the irrelevance and power creep the brothers have suffered in recent years? Well, we're going to find out, starting with the younger of the two. For whatever reason, the Overwatch devs have decided that Genji of all heroes has the balance team, well, for lack of a better word, it's kind of their kryptonite. Throughout the hero's lifespan, there have only really been a few instances where Genji has been meta-defining or extremely strong to the point of requiring a nerf. Being an average tier, high skill, high risk, high reward hero, and healthy as a standalone hero for years. He was strong in 2017 because of Nanoblade spam, which is a lot of the footage in the uh, video that I have here showing. Before counter abilities like Immortality Field or Briggs' entire existence made it difficult for him to execute it safely, uh, Ana's nano, nano Boost excuse me, used to also apply a movement speed boost on top of the damage, making heroes that wanted to get in your face and utilize the buff like Genji and Reaper the DPS nano pick of choice in dive compositions, but. The nature of the hero in neutral requires immense precision and timing to execute the plays effectively, since a lot of the times you need to get aggressive and invest your dash to invest kills, and if you don't, it's quite likely that you die. Other dive options like Tracer and Sombra proved more consistent overall with less margin for error and arguably higher rewards at points, while having easy get out of jail free cards like Translocator, Blinks, and Recall. With being less resource dependent, since much of Genji's power budget was delegated to his blade, which saw indirect nerfs after Anna's nano movement speed was removed. Neutral fights on the other dive choices were so, uh, so much better to the point of Genji being slowly phased out of this meta in favor of other choices. He was a solid pick, don't get me wrong, but he was nowhere near meta at this point. Genji stayed in a lukewarm state of balance up until 2020 in Overwatch League Season 3. By this era in Genji's life, Goats had already finished up with the introduction of the 2 2 2 roll lock. And I don't really think I need to explain the state of balance for Genji and dive heroes in general up to that point, so we're just going to look past that and give Team 4 a break here. The introduction of Sigma Double Shield and rather docile approach to targeted AoE sustain like Baptiste and Pre-Patch Brig made it extremely difficult for Genji to do, well, anything. The only remotely strong thing about the hero at this point was Nanoblade, and since both Bap and Brig were predominantly better and easier choices than Ana, you seldom saw that combo used in anything beyond the ranked ladder spamming cheese strats and masters and GM lobbies. Blizzard saw Genji's poor state at this uh, point as an opportunity to shake up the competitive meta, and in June of 2020 he got a massive overbuff to his kit. 
with plus 2 damage on a shuriken from 28 to 30, deflect going up to 2 seconds from 1.5, and the ability to cancel it by pressing E again, heavily increasing his dual potential, as well as a sp shotgun spread buff on his right click to increase his overall consistency and damage potential, to line up with the other DPS flankers anyway. During this time, Genji was hard meta in both ladder and the Overwatch League, and while undeniably broken, he gave us some of the best moments in professional Overwatch history. Think the Paris Eternal Cinderella run to the stage title, or EQO's Hero Blade on Rialto, arguably the greatest play in Overwatch history to some. Nerfs came shortly after the tournament, and Genji never really saw playtime again for the rest of Overwatch 1. But I say to hell with balance with that, because honestly, and this is a sentiment that a lot of people share, but heroes like Genji and Tracer being meta is not only a good thing, it's actually when the game is at its healthiest state and at its most fun. Now, I'm not saying buff Genji to the point of him being predominantly the best flex DPS option or like even the best hero in the game, not nothing like that. Not to the extent that they overbuffed him in Season 3, but just make him a healthy kind of strong. The healthy kind of strong that Venture or Alari or these like balanced traditionally seen as good quote good heroes are rather than have him be either completely dog shit or really broken for two weeks and then nerf him again so that he can be dog shit for another two to three years. In Overwatch 2 though Genji was a massive winner of the 5v5 format and the new DPS passive that made him a Lucio speed boosted 1 second reload time god that didn't have to worry about a second tank peeling off his dive attempts as much. It felt like the hero was finally in a good state, as he deserved, and although the DPS passive was really strong at the time, other DPS picks like Sojourn and Soldier would take the spotlight during this time, and she was not only extremely broken, but even more broken than Genji was. Yet to nobody's surprise, Genji was the first of the two to go. He got his ammo reduced to 24 from 30, damage down to 27, abysmal 27, and was in the worst state of balance to this day, at least in Overwatch 2. At least. The developer's reasoning for keeping Soldier in the way she was, was her lack of prevalence in the lower elos, and difficulty and skillful nature. As if Genji was any different? For those of you watching that played during this time, you know full well how Soldier dominated the hitscan role for practically 3 seasons, and made anything basically anything else. A throw pick. And even after numerous tweaks, she was still at the top of every tier list and the ideal DPS choice for most players. Then Tracer with 6 damage per pellet, Echo and pre rework Sombra, who essentially won the 5v5 format in the same way that Genji did, was strong as a byproduct of the format, took his place as stronger flanker options for the remainder of the game's lifespan so far, keeping Genji in this weird niche state for the longest of times. Really, you only play him with Malga or as a double hit scan counter when people really have enough of you playing Tracer. And that's about it. Fast forward to Season 9, and everybody's health has gone up to 250, and Genji is just laying on the ground as a hero that's relying on breakpoints and the damage number is just being just enough to get that dash reset. And now he's suffering because neither the damage on right click nor the damage on dash or blade is sufficient and have been adjusted to compensate for his prior nerfs in early Overwatch 2, and it honestly feels like this hero has been left out to be power crept, especially with new, easier, and stronger FDPS options like Venture being released as recently as the current season. And then there's the blade change, holy fuck the blade change. Genji's blade was changed in that it was supposed to be a buff playstyle readjustment to take away some of the inherent gripes that players have had with nanoblade spam. Uh, Nanoblade as an ability was unfun to play against, since if you didn't have the ultimate economy to combat it, and the Genji executed properly, and was good at it, keyword good at it, the team would just have to take the L, and dry fight, and play to intentionally lose that fight, so that they can play on better terms with the next one. Uh, for teams who were over-reliant on the ability though, you would just lose the next 2-3 to three fights until you got the ability again, and then team wipe, and then rinse repeat, ultimately ending in you losing the game anyways, so I don't really think it's that much of a problem. You actually saw this as far as the Overwatch League meta in its final season, uh, notably the Vancouver Titans getting too Nanoblade happy with Sugar Free on Genji, rather than adjusting to the meta which arguably lost them that stage and a potential playoff berth for them. Uh, but in the current patch, Genji Blade saw a damage reduction which broke the slash dash one shot breakpoint for 200 HP targets, 
plus those set targets getting HP changes for the new season as well. And to compensate, you got a decrease on the time in between swings, which didn't really end up helping his DPS all that much. And it actually hurt the muscle memory that Genji mains had with the slash dash, to the point where slash into another slash became the optimal way to do damage with the ability instead of slash dash, period. Blade has basically been relegated to the point of dashing up and immediately deflecting back to your team to play a game of chicken with the enemy support ults. And I don't think that's really indicative of an ultimate ability, nor one of Genji's caliber with the amount of skill that it takes to execute the ability effectively. In my opinion, all Genji really needs to be back in a good spot again would be to increase the shuriken damage to 28, as Abby Overwatch suggested in How Genji Lost His Identity video, which I really recommend, you guys go watch that first. Probably also Karku's video on the state of Genji, which is where I got most of my information from. But uh, anyways, in my opinion, I would give him a blade revert back to how it was as well, or maybe 75, 60 something damage, up from 50 on his dash, whatever the breakpoint is, I don't know the math guys, but bear with me. Uh, something like 75 damage on his dash, if you're not going to buff the shuriken. So it helps him effectively kill his breakpoints after the season 9 change. Uh, I'm sure Genji players can relate to what I'm saying here because the amount of times that I've dashed someone on 1 HP that looked killable, that ended up either living on the slightest bit of HP because it just doesn't do enough damage, or people will get healed up even a tiny bit, is frankly ridiculous for what the ability is designed to do, which is secure, secure 1 HP skills, or 1 HP kills, sorry, and escape. It wasn't a problem before the HP change, and when I dashed someone and they survived, at least it felt like a skill issue on my part. I would just have to dash them quicker or save the CD entirely since they were not at the breakpoint yet. But it's starting to get really tricky now and it seems that it's not intentional on the developer's part. Uh, at least right now all of his contemporaries do a similar job to him as well, but better, with less risk and more consistency. And the peaks of Genji aren't even there anymore to compensate for that since Nanoblade is complete total garbage ever since the change. In my opinion the devs failed in their goal of giving Genji a strong neutral on par of his in-class counterparts, while compensating by reducing the power of Blade, which in fairness they did do, just way too hard when considering how mediocre his overall neutral feels anyways right now in this current patch. And ironically enough, his older brother Hanzo is the one who got the short end of the stick here, because at least Genji has some playtime in the Malga compositions and in pro play. Again, that's Genji being strong as a byproduct of the meta rather than he himself being strong, because the meta is shifting to heroes that synergize well with him. Sojourn was no different because all it took was a dash to kill someone she headshot on with like 50 or 40 charge, but for Hanzo, he may actually be dead as of the making of this video, and I feel really bad for your player base. Despite the bad rap that the Genji player base gets from this community, as being whiny, arrogant, uh, refusing to swap from the hero at times. I've almost never seen Genji discourse that other player bases like Mercy Mains, Doomfist Mains, granted Doomfist Mains actually have a genuine reason for it, uh, or the 9IQ counter-swapping crybaby Flats viewers who are constantly complaining. Uh, we're actually a pretty docile player base that has accepted Genji's current state of balance for the most part. And that's why only recently you've seen creators like Abby and Sumito get the discussion rolling. Uh, Hanzo's a different story though. See, I'm a Genji main and I'd be lying if I said if I wasn't passionate about making Genji a balanced and enjoyable hero for everyone, both playing as and against. But I don't think anything makes my blood boil watching on the sidelines than the way the Hanzo community has been completely middle-fingered by both Blizzard and the player base as a whole. And it's the main reason as to why I even made the video to begin with. Uh, it honestly seems like the only reason Hanzo was actually changed was because a bunch of gold and plat players complained about Hanzo's projectile taking no skill and getting logged from a corner. Apparently it's an RNG interaction. I'm gonna keep it real, if you are saying that, you are probably ass. Please stop talking. His projectile is definitely easier to hit than raw hitscans like Widow and Sojourn that require you to precisely aim at the target and either flick or wait for your crosshair to align with their head to hit the shot. That much is true. But don't act like Hanzo's aim isn't completely without difficulty either. You have to lead the shot first, which takes time to learn compared to hitscan options in the main DPS class. The damage is less consistent since there's a travel time, so even if you do aim the shot well, you might miss, and people can find ways to avoid the arrow, deflect the arrow, avoid the arrow on reaction if they're good enough, and the ability doesn't even fucking one-shot anymore. 
besides 175 characters like Tracer and Widow. Hanzo has genuinely been relegated to a hero that Flex DPS players play on Circuit, Havana, and Junkertown when they aren't skilled enough to play Widow, or know how to play the hero at all. Or a pick for mid elo players to spam down a choke and farm tanks with Storm Arrow. Like, hitscans like Cassidy and Soldier do that better anyways, or shield break ta uh, playstyles, tank busting like Bastion, do infinitely better. It's never like Hanzo was broken in Overwatch 2 anyways, because he saw some place time in the Overwatch League, sure, and was a consensus A tier DPS pick until now, sure, but he was solid, never broken. So why the change? I just don't get it. His window of punishment is way higher than other members of his class, since even though Lunge is on a significantly shorter cooldown than, say, Grapple, it barely sends you anywhere compared to Ash, Coach Gun, or Widow Grapple, uh, and don't even get me started on Cassidy Roll or High Noon damage reduction either. Give him his inducted arrow charge on Wall's back, and at least, at least, make it so that flanker heroes like Genji, Sombra, Echo, or stationary heroes like Ash and Sojourn, you know, the matchups that you want to play him in the medium to long ranges against, die to the one shot. Like, holy shit, balance team. It is actually terrible how you land a good shot on a hitscan that does damage faster, better, and more consistently than you, and you outplay them, only to see that you've left them on 1 HP to get healed up again by their supports because you're hitting them on a range that's too far away to get any fo realistic follow-up on, on maps where it's also too realistic to get any follow-up on, you know, sniper maps. And the only way you're getting any consistent value at this point is Sonic arrowing a corner and spamming that corner, which is the problematic part of the playstyle the dev team doesn't like in the first place, or you spam Storm Arrow on DPS from angles for headshot kills, or shield break value on tanks, which other heroes can do better too. So you've exacerbated the bad parts of his playstyle, because you wanted to remove what was problematic about the hero, in the eyes of people who don't really know that much about him, and then gave him... 2 seconds on Storm Arrow? Like, is that really worth it? I don't fucking know. Uh... Not to say that the opinions of lower rank shouldn't be factored, but damn, bro, like, come on, guys. There's way worse. Bastion, Reaper, Jesus, Malga. Sombra being the most hated hero in low ranks, I can keep going. Like, how, it practically every rank, to be honest. You look at all the heroes in this game, and Hanzo was the one that you decided to kill. I'm not entirely sure what the devs were thinking about that, but I think they missed the mark, and I'm glad that Alec and the bounce team addressed this recently, directly. And Hanzo's gonna get the readjustments that he deserves. Whatever they choose to do, I think it's some health pool shit. I hope it works out. Because, wow, like, the hero not only lost his identity, but he's also bad. Like, that is not a good combo. Especially when the hero was already fine to begin with. Like, whatever, man. But, uh, anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video thus far. Uh, it's a little bit of a deviation from the content I usually make. But I wanted to try something new and throw my hat into the Genji and Hanzo discourse that's been popping up on my feed recently. Since I'm so glad that our player bases finally stood up and said something about the state of these heroes, because I'm frankly tired of it as well. They are some of the shining examples of game design in Overwatch, and it pains me that they've been reduced to such boring garbage, especially in the case of Hanzo actually. Not only in terms of balance, but more so in terms of identity. But anyways, uh, that's it for me. To the right, you can watch a tips video I made for DPS, or a funky little OWCS video I made for the Dallas tournament. Uh, anyways, have a good one, y'all, and peace out. what I am, and I have forgiven you. Now you must forgive yourself. The world is changing once again, Hanzo, and it's time to pick a side. Real life is not like the stories our father told us. You are a fool for believing it so. Perhaps I am a fool to think there is still hope for you. But I do. Think on that, brother.